Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Keith. This is All Things Tenerife and more. I've swapped sunny Tenerife. Well, not so sunny Dublin. Uh, right, <laughs> let's start. I'm actually starting outside of the National Wax Museum in Dublin. Okay, sorry. I just saw an old friend of mine facing the crowd. Mick, how you doing? Great to see you again. Nice to catch up. Uh, didn't particularly want to talk to him on this, so yeah. It's nice to see an old face, an old friendly face in the crowd. So, as I said, I'm down here outside the Wax Museum. If you have kids that need entertaining, yeah, go for it. It's not the best, I'll be brutally honest with you. It's no Madame Tussauds, there's no question about that. But where I am, and where you're probably more interested in, is infamous, the infamous Temple Bar. Hang on a sec. So this is the beginning of Temple Bar. So, Temple Bar is often mistaken as uh, a bar, which it is, but it's also an area. So Temple Bar starts here and goes all the way up to Christ Church. Christ Church is an old medieval church at the end of the city. I'll bring you up as far as there. So this is it. This is Temple Bar. And I think I've drank in every single place in it. The palace, absolutely. Now, think about Temple Bar. The fleet, that's a nice hotel as is the Temple Bar Inn. Both good hotels. Uh, if you want something decent, <laughs> if you want something decent in Temple Bar, Temple Bar Hotel is a nice hotel. But obviously if you're staying in Temple Bar and you choose any of these hotels, make sure you pick a room that's at the back because this place doesn't stop. It's going every day, 12 till maybe four, five, six o'clock in the morning. Buskers, great live venue if you want music and you want sports and a lot of entertainment downstairs in it. Hard Rock Cafe, absolutely everywhere. The Morgan Hotel. When I worked as a taxi driver in Dublin, it was absolutely one of my favorite hotels to work out of. Again, always, always gets great reviews. Would be middle of the road, not massively expensive. Thunder Road Cafe. Temple Bar is probably only quiet from about seven o'clock in the morning till about 11. It's now half 12, 20 to one, and it's starting to pick up. I've already passed some hens. Like I say, it's the stag and hen capital of Dublin. These boys here will bring you up to Guinness's Pony and Trap well worth doing as you can see now let me cross over here for a sec because this is sort of the middle of temple bar so this is the old dubliner or the old dub oliver john gorgody's fantastic live music every night if you head up here on the next corner, you've got the Mongolian barbecue and you've got, uh, God, Bloom's Hotel. Bloom's Hotel. Now, Cafe Nero, Boxty. There's lots of great restaurants in here. And the people in the paddy caps, trust me, they're not Irish. Elephant and Castle, arguably the best chicken wings in Dublin, without a question. Great little spot. Uh, they do a great lager as well in there. It's a traditional Irish, or it's a local Irish beer, a local Irish lager called the Five Lamps. Traditional Irish sweet shop. And this is the square. Now, since I came out this morning, I've had sun splitting the trees, which I had to take my jacket off, was that warm. It's now raining, which is typical Dublin. Badass Cafe, absolutely fantastic little restaurant. Good music, great food. Now, you've got the Badass Cafe. The old storehouse, Leo Burdocks, the chip I was telling you about earlier on. Fantastic little spot. Now, here's the Hall of Fame. All the different people that have eaten here. Pause it and have a look. 
Now, if you're in Dublin and you want to treat yourself and your other half, you're here for a little romantic weekend, this is a proper hidden gem. It should actually be underneath the definition of hidden gems should be here. This scruffy looking door is the Vintage Cocktail Club. Okay, so as I say, you're here, romantic weekend, knock on the door. Uh, the slide goes across, it's an old speakeasy. It's one of the coolest bars you'll ever find in Dublin City and most people, like they are now, just walk straight by it. <laughs> Nobody knows it's, it exists. Inside of it is one of the coolest bars you'll ever see. You have to knock on the door, they don't let you in otherwise. So, rap on the door, slide goes across, bounce it open the door, they let you in. Inside of it, it's decorated like a 1920 speakeasy. Uh, so, they have little flock wallpaper on the wall, gold trim paintings. Uh, all the tables have little, little uh, tossled uh, lamps on it. It is just one of the coolest places you'll ever be in. And some people actually go in and dress in the period. So they'll dress in the flapper. Some of the girls and the lads will wear suits. It's just one of those places that it's just a really cool little spot in Dublin city. And as I said, it's a proper hidden gem. VCC, the Vintage Cocktail Club. Now, when you're in Dublin city, when you're in Temple Bar, particularly keep your hand on your handbike. Keep your eye on obvious stuff. Don't be the obvious tourist. I'm looking now and I can see a few hooky little individuals. So, let me have a look and see what I can recommend here for you. The Keys Bar, again, good little spot. It's the tallest leprechaun you'll ever see. Temple Bar Gallery. So as you can see, this is Temple Bar at half past 12-ish. This is not busy. It's pretty busy, but it's not massively busy. So we watch ourselves when you're in it. So now we're coming up to the infamous Temple Bar. So this is the Temple Bar. Music is absolutely fantastic in it. Food is quite good. Like anything, the anything in Temple Bar is expensive. Anything in this area is expensive. You're talking 10 euros a point plus depending on the time of day. It goes up as the day goes on, it gets more expensive. So just be aware that it's not, not gonna be a cheap holiday. Dublin City, make sure you, you make allowances for that fact. It's not gonna be cheap. Norseman, never been in it actually, but looks like a sort of vibrant little spot. Fitzsimon's Temple Bar, three stories of bars, absolutely fantastic, been there many a time. Uh, last time I was in it was Monday, we were playing, was playing, this is an Irish singer. And uh, yeah, good crack, good night. Actually it was a good afternoon, it wasn't a night, it was an afternoon gig. But yeah, good little spot. Now I'm hoping around the corner now this place is still open. Uh, there's a food market every Saturday morning. Yep, looks like it's still open. And uh, definitely worth a trip if you want to have a little look around at something in Temple Bar that isn't just drink related this little place is definitely it you see people are shedding, sheltering from the rain so if you get peckish nowhere better than to have a little look around here a lot of it's traditional, a lot of it's artisan food. A lot of it would be homegrown here in Ireland. So it's definitely worth a little look around if you're here. This is Not huge, but as I say, if you get a little bit peckish when you're on your way and you're walking around the city, definitely worth a look in. I suppose that's the one thing about Dublin. Everybody associates Dublin City with, with drink, with alcohol. They don't associate us with food. And some of the best restaurants, certainly some of the best seafood restaurants you'll ever eat in are in Dublin City. There's no question, Smoking Bones. I forgot they'd move down here. This fantastic little restaurant, particularly if you like ribs, and I do, I'm particularly fond of them. Uh, they do really good ribs. 
So as you can see, falafel, there's something for everybody in this city. Absolutely something for everybody. And this is still Temple Bar. Anne's Bar, that's new. Do not remember that. And mind you, it's been a long time since I've been in Dublin. Cleaver East. This is a nice restaurant. It's expensive, but it is a great restaurant. This is the Clarence Hotel. Well, this is the back of the Clarence Hotel. The front of the Clarence Hotel overlooks the Liffey. This is what people affectionately refer to as Bono's Hotel or the U2 Hotel. It was owned and is owned by Bono's brother-in-law. And Bono, and I think The Edge had a minor sharing at the beginning when the chap started off first. But uh, it's kind of got an old gentleman's feel, club feel to it. Again, worked out of it many a time when I was taxiing in Dublin City, but the restaurant I've eaten in, the food is fantastic. Extremely good, if you're looking for a good steak, nowhere better than there. So, Porterhouse. Again, great food. A nice little bar. So, we're coming towards the end of Temple Bar now. And like I said, most people associate Temple Bar with just that little section that we walked past there earlier on. In fact, as I say, we're still walking through Temple Bar. That building up ahead is Dublin Castle. Again, I'll cover it later on in another vlog. But Wow, Turk's Head has been completely renovated. That's not what it used to look like. Wow. I'll tell you, quite a few places now have changed, I'm assuming changed hands or just decided on a revamp. This is the quieter end of Temple Bar, but if you're in Temple Bar, you may as well walk all the way up here because if you don't, you're going to miss out on, to me, it's the most beautiful cathedral we have in Dublin City. There's quite a few cathedrals sort of vie for that uh, honor of being the best cathedral in Dublin City. But to me, Christ Church is the only one that actually comes anywhere near that title. Now, this is Cow's Lane. In Cow's Lane, you have... Oh, it's not actually there's not as much as it used to be. There used to be a lot of market stalls here. Again, maybe the weather has scared them off. But uh, it's normally worth a look in the height of the tourist season because it is actually quite busy and there's normally about 10 or 15 stalls there uh, and this is one thing i always remember when you come to dublin bring a hat bring a <laughs> bring a raincoat you think i'd know better considering i live here but uh yeah what can i say it is miserable at times okay wasn't expecting that now this may have something to do with the fact that Handel, the person who wrote the Messiah, yes, it definitely has, first performed it here. And so I wasn't expecting this. This statue inside. But this is Fishamble Street. And it's, okay, it's actually looking like they're about. So, we've stumbled upon this inadvertently. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, I can't stand it because it's really, the rain is actually picking up. I'm gonna run up here. Oops, I'm gonna finish on the gonna finish on Christchurch Cathedral because that rain is getting pretty heavy I might come back down here and see what's actually going on as I said I'm assuming it's got something to do with Handel's Messiah now Darky Kelly's Harding Hotel Harding Hotel is a good little hotel and as I say if you want to stay in Temple Bar it's probably just it's the quietest end of Temple Bar this is the very end of Temple Bar it finishes here and this is Christchurch Cathedral. Without question, my favourite 
building in Dublin city. And typical, the rain is easing off. So this would have been built on the border of Dublin city where the pale is. Dublin was originally a walled city. And this, as I say, is Christchurch Cathedral. Okay, as you can see, getting a little wet, but that's what happens, as I said, if you're visiting Dublin, make sure you bring a hat, bring an umbrella, bring rain gear. It's part and parcel. Nobody comes here for the weather. That's one thing for sure. Uh, thank you for watching me this long. Hope you're enjoying what you see. Hit the like, subscribe, the bell for notification. Uh, talk to you in the next one. Take care.